All right, for Utah State, we have student athletes Miesh Keita, Sam Merrill, Coach Craig Smith. Coach, let's start with you. Get your thoughts on today's game. Well, what a what a fantastic game. Obviously, San Diego State um, is a. I mean, they've won the mo They're very, very good. First of all, they're incredibly talented. They're strong. They're physical. They're athletic. They're well coached, and they have experience in these types of games. And they've won the most Mountain West Conference men's basketball <laughs> championships in the history of um, the Mountain West. Obviously, they're the defending conference tournament champions. And so um, it was a heck of a game. You know, I'm so proud of our team. Obviously, just the camaraderie, the chemistry that we have. I've been, I've been coaching 23 years, and I've been very fortunate to be on some very good teams. Uh, coaching at any high school, we played the national championship. These guys, I've never seen a group just bond together and come as far as we have over the last um, 10, 11 months or so. And you have to have great catalysts in your program. And these are our two catalysts, uh, and Sam Merrill and Namiya Shikeda. And, you know, Sam's accolades speak for themselves. Um, and Namiya being the freshman of the year and defensive player of the year. And those guys played like warriors tonight. And then what never gets talked about enough is we, our, our guys, the rest of our guys are stars in their role. And I think that's the key ingredient to being really, really good. You better have a couple dudes like these two guys, but you better have guys that are stars in their roles. And I can't say enough good things about the rest of our guys on our team and how we just kept accelerating and getting better game in and game out and week in and week out. And that was the theme of our years. Let's just keep getting better. Let's just keep getting better. And we're playing our best basketball. I don't know what we won, 17 or 18 or 18 out of 19, whatever it is. Um, but... You know, this game, to be able to hold a team like this, and this has been our calling card all year. We're pretty good on offense. I think we're fifth or sixth in the country in assists on the year, but it's been our defense. And to hold a team like that to 33% on the game, for the game and 27% in the second half, that's how you're able to close out games, and that's how you're able to close out champions, championships. So I want to thank the Mountain West Conference. This, this league is incredible. The leadership at the top with Craig Thompson, Dan Butterly, and in that whole administration is just remarkable. And they're always there to, to help a guy out and help our programs out and to win this and make history. You know, it's Utah State's first ever uh, Mountain West Tournament Championship and obviously regular season as well. So we're really proud of that and we're gonna carry that and represent the Mountain West in a great fashion in the NCAA tournament. Thank you, Coach. Let's take questions for the student athletes first. Sam, the last couple of nights, y'all, you've talked about us wanting to cut down a net. Can you tell us a little bit what it was like to finally be able to do that? I, I, I still, I, I don't really know. <laughs> um, you know, for those of us that, were, that have been here for the last few years, um, it, it hasn't been easy. Um, but we've, you know, I don't really know what to say. I mean, 11 months ago, Almost a year ago, Coach Smith was hired, and and we we felt right away that that uh, that we were going to have an opportunity to be pretty good. And um, you know, as someone who grew up a Utah State fan and grew up, you know, watching Utah State go to the tournament um, and win conference championships, um, you know, it means the world to me, um, and it means the world to us as a team. We've put in put in so much work and and like like everything coach said we've worked so hard and we've come together as a team and um I, I I'm still sitting here thinking and I just you know from where we were um <laughs> I I just I can't I don't know I still can't believe it um it's it's an incredible feeling uh Keita, um a year ago you were in Portugal and you had this decision to come to Utah State, uh, were you expecting to have this kind of success when you made that decision? Um, before I came here, I didn't know what I was getting into, but as soon as, <laughs> as, soon as I practiced, I knew, uh, I knew we, were, we were gonna be this good, and we just, we just kept on working the whole year, and it felt awesome just to get, to get win after win after win, and um, that doesn't happen by, um, that doesn't happen like like that. You got to work for that, and we and we did. I'm I'm pretty sure we did, and it, it shows. Right here. So either Sam or Kata, like in that first half, you guys struggled. And you were up by two at, at halftime. 
Then you open up the second half of the 13-0 run. What were you guys talking about in halftime, and how did you implement that to go on that big run that kind of decided the game in the end? Um, we felt, you know, we felt pretty similar to, to the New Mexico game in the quarterfinals. Um, we didn't feel like we played all that well in the first half, and yet we were still up by two, so we were pretty confident coming out of the half. But, um, you know, Coach gave us a couple adjustments that we needed to make that were, that were obviously very helpful and <clears throat> stressed the importance of those first five minutes of the second half, and that's when we went on that big run. So, um, you know, that's something we've been doing all year. We close halves well. We start halves well for the most part. So, um, fortunately, we were able to hang on from there. Mimi, when will you get to talk to your family about this, and how much does this mean that you get to share this news with them? Um, right now, it's probably midnight around Portugal. They're probably <laughs> asleep, so <laughs> um, only tomorrow, but it's going to be really good to talk to them and share my happiness with them. Sam, I was just curious your thoughts in the first half. Jeremy Hemsley for San Diego State's had the reputation of being maybe the best defender in that program's history or certainly on in that discussion. What was he like in that first half as you were trying to find some offensive rhythm, and what does he do, do on a night-to-night -night basis that's unique defensively, if anything? Yeah, he's, he's a great defender. The last two games, he's made it real tough on me. Um, he, he does a really good job of mixing things up. Um, when I'm coming off of handoffs or screens, he kind of keeps me off balance by sometimes going over the top and sometimes going underneath. And obviously, he's, he's long and athletic, so... Um, he did a very good job and um, give him credit. Fortunately, you know, as a team, we were able to open things up a little bit there in the second half and uh, we were able to knock down some shots. Mm -hmm. Sam, with about four minutes to go in the first half, you had four points, you stepped up, you missed a free throw, you walked away, you kind of said something to yourself. Was that kind of like your, I need to do this now or never moment for you? Yeah, I feel that way every time I miss a free throw. <laughs> um, but. Yeah, I had gotten a couple good looks and I missed them, um, but I don't know, for some reason I missed that free throw and just felt like, hey, yeah, like you said, like it's time to go, time to get things going, and um, fortunately I was, for the most part, able to make some shots there in the second half. Over here, to our left. Uh, uh, Sam, do you have any distinct memory in particular of that 2011 championship game that you attended? Um, just remember they won. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, just remember, you know, that was, that was a, an incredible year for that team. I think they en finished the season 30-3 and three or something like that. And I do remember the next day being really upset that they only got a 12 seed. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's been, been a while for, for Utah State. Um, obviously eight years since we've been to the NCAA tournament. It's been probably five or six years since we've been to any postseason. So um, to be a part of this with this team – um, as a team to, to kind of help the resurgence of this program. It's, it's been a pretty fun ride. Sam, Coach mentioned that you held the Aztecs to 27% shooting in the uh, second half. Could you talk about the defensive adjustments that you made in the second half compared to the first half? Yeah, we didn't do a great job on Watson in the first half. He got, we fouled him on a three. With, obviously, he's great at pump fake, and we fouled him there. Fouled him on two threes. Um, but he had, I think, 12 or 13, so... We, we stressed keeping him off of his right hand and trying to limit his space. And then um, just, you know, Coach stressed to us, the toughest team is going to win this game. And that was a, a game of two very, very tough and physical teams. Obviously, San Diego State, that's what they're known for. And that's what they do so well. But um, we were able to control Watson a little bit better in the second half and um, didn't rebound as well, but got the rebounds that we needed. And... Um, that's part of the reason why we held them to such a low percentage. Over here. Uh, both Sam and Kata, um, in the first half, uh, Abel Porter was really integral to you guys keeping pace with San Diego State. He went four for four, and I think two from two from three-point range. Uh, how big was he to help you guys kind of get your footing in this game um, before San Diego State might have built a large lead there? You go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> Abel, Abel's a gamer. Um, I've been I've been playing with Abel since we since eighth grade, um, and I know exactly the kind of player he is. And he's had a lot of big big shots for us this year. Um, the New Mexico game <clears throat> hit a hit a ton of big shots at Boise. Hit a big shot against San Diego State. So um, you know I could 
pregame, I could feel that he was, you know, he was locked in and ready. And um, obviously, he's he's made such such great progress throughout the season, and his confidence has gone up so much. And um, you know, to be honest, wasn't a surprise to us because we know that Abel's that type of player. Um, we know Abel's a really good player for us. Um, he's just. He's just always with a smile. He always, he's always trying to calm us down when we, whenever we're nervous or anything like that. So um, we weren't surprised about that. Um, we we just kept on playing, and he hit some big shots and did, did whatever whatever he needed to, and it helped us a lot. So Sam, uh, you've mentioned a couple of times throughout the season that your biggest goal, you know, in college basketball is to make it to the tournament. Was this kind of a dream come true to you that you know you're in the NCAA tournament? You know it's guaranteed at this point. Actually, my goal is to win an NCAA tournament game. <laughs> it's been it's been what 2002, 2001, something like that. It's almost 17 years since Utah State's won a tournament game. So this was uh, obviously this is incredible, but I feel like we have a lot more left in the tank, and we're gonna definitely try and show that wherever wherever we end up this next weekend. Over here. To one for each of you. Kato, Kato, what was your expectations for the season when you made the decision to go to Utah State? What were you hoping for? And then the follow-up is, Sam, the first time you got to step on a court and play with him, what did you think? <laughs> uh, can you repeat it? When you made the decision to go to Utah State, what were your expectations for this season? Um, I just wanted to get better and improve every day. Um, Coach Schmidt told me, told me that when, I, when, I, when he was recruiting me. Um, and I think I did every day. Every day I, I stepped in the court and tried to be the best player I could be. And I think, and I think my teammates helped me a lot improve to improve and grow grow a lot from this year. Um, practicing with Nimi is great when he's on your team. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you guys have seen it all year. He is he's a monster inside, and it's <clears throat> to be honest, I haven't. We've been on the same team a lot in practices, but every time I'm not, it's like. You don't even want to drive to the rim because you because you know it's going to get blocked or you're going to have to put up a tough shot. So yes, not only that, but or, yeah. he might foul too. Yeah. No, 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 no. I never foul. I, I was not before he got here. I wasn't fully sold because there are a lot of guys, maybe not as long as him, but there are a lot of guys in our league that are six eleven, <laughs> athletic, pretty long, and you know they don't quite have the motor or whatever. But as soon as he got here. The first couple practices, you could tell this dude has an absolute motor, and he's probably the second most competitive guy on our team behind me. <laughs> um, but <laughs> he's, you know, he's. It's so it makes it makes life so much easier playing with him, and um, <clears throat> we're grateful that the coaches were able to make that late find with him for sure. <laughs> I got to tell you one story. So the first practice, like Nimi gets here and first, we throw him in the first practice. <laughs> And because you know he wasn't here over the summer, and and I just told him before practice, Nimi, like we're just gonna throw you out there and you just gotta figure it out. Like it's five on five, we're going. Some of our local guys have heard this, and um, and so we're going. And we kind of just want to see what he could do too, you know. And, and Sam's right, he's like a he's like a greyhound going from rim to rim, and and he just moves so well and defending screen and roll. And, and then there was a play. I think Sam got beat off the bounce, and. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. It wasn't Sam. It was someone else. But Sam goes to rotate, and Nimi's like, Sam, Sam, don't worry about the paint. I got the paint. And uh, I was like, oh, I like that swagger. And, uh, and he does have the paint. <laughs> you know, so he was a, a prophet, and he knew exactly what he was talking about. <coughs> I can True. tell more stories if you guys want. <laughs> nah, I want to go home. <laughs> hey, we kept Sam way past his bedtime last night. I was a little worried that the afternoon game, Nimi kind of likes the afternoon lap, but I knew Sam likes the afternoon game, so it was like, okay, how are we going to be? But, but we were good to go. Back to, uh, Still for the players, I'm sorry. I just shut up. Okay. Uh, Kata, obviously you've had a lot of success before coming to Utah State, um, playing internationally and in Europe. Um, where does this accomplishment in going to the tournament um, rank amongst your accomplishments so far uh, in your basketball career? I mean, it's probably the biggest accomplishment in my career. I hope it's not the biggest of my overall career. I'm a, I will work to get even more of these and um, improve as a player and get as best as I can be. Yeah, Sam, last year after, uh, after the Boise State game in the tournament, you had a really great quote 
You said you're not out here to win quarterfinal games, you're out here to win championships. You win a championship tonight, and I just want to know how it feels sitting next to that trophy compared to what you thought it would feel like, and I mean, is it, is it every bit what you thought? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Ashad, I, I don't really know what to think right now, to be honest. Um, I'm still in, in disbelief. I mean, not disbelief, but like, I still can't believe that we actually did it. And, um, but at the same time, we as a team, we all bought into our system and we didn't have one guy that, that was trying to do his own thing or was focusing on, <clears throat> on getting his own numbers or, or, or whatever. We, we all bought in and, and that's what helped us get here. So um, compared to how I felt after the New Mexico game last year in the semifinals, I would say sitting right here feels feels definitely much better, for sure. <laughs> just a little. Yeah, just a little. One, more play, one more for the players. Kata, not a lot of players from Portugal have come through the Mountain West Conference, but you're lucky in that you get to play with another teammate from Portugal. You grabbed them, hugged them, lifted them about five feet in the air. You went up on the stage with the Portuguese flag. Just how special is it to be able to share this moment with a guy from your home country? It's really special. Um, before I came here, I didn't know Diogo, um, but um, having a Portuguese player and a Portuguese speaking guy here is it's really nice. And he's, he knows everything, he knows a lot of things about around here. He teaches me a lot of things around here. He's basically my dad, <laughs> he takes care I'm of me. <laughs> nah, 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 he's basically my dad though. Not you, Sam, but um, he, he just takes care of me and I, and I really, I really love him, and we're we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on working to get better. Okay, I'm gonna just dismiss the student athletes at this time. Thank you very much, man. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey! This way, this way, this way. <clears throat> Questions for the coach? Uh, yeah, coach. You're almost you as shiny as the here? trophy. Just my glare. <laughs> uh, Coach, uh, last season uh, with South Dakota, actually the past couple of seasons, you've had um, goals and dreams of winning the Summit League tournament. Last season, you guys lost in the conference championship to also a rival as well. Um, does it make it a little bit sweeter, um, having been through those experiences, those hardships, does it make it sweeter to now be on top of the mountain? It's a... It's a that's uh, really amazing that you just asked that question. Um, when we were on the podium taking pictures with um, our family, with the team, and then our coaching staff and family, and I said to, you know, our coaching staff, I get, I get a little choked up here. Um, that group at South Dakota was a really, really good group. And, um, I mean, we, we flipped that thing in two years, and, win the regular season title our third year and um and we were won 26 games last year and just you know we got la lost on a last second shot um two years ago and then um just kind of ran into a buzz on the championship game and those those guys <clears throat> um believed in us and and um I said to the staff I wish these guys could feel I wish those guys could feel what we're feeling right now um you just <clears throat> as a coach Everyone operates their program differently. Um, we, we really, um, we truly operate like being a family. And uh, these guys have been unbelievable. Our team at Mayville, um, year before we got there, they won one game. We make the national tournament our first year, get to the lead eight our second year. We're playing the national championship game our third year. And, and the year before we got there, they won one game. And we had, what, three guys that played on our Mayville team at this game tonight. Flew, flew in to, to be at the game. And that means so much. But, you know, our guys, God, you just can't stop talking about our players. They're just... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. It's just an amazing group. When you look at the growth that these guys had, and we talked about our youth and all that kind of stuff, but you really think back to the year, and not one time did we lose back-to-back -back games this year. Not one. 
Like you play, what's our record? 28 and six. So 30, you play 34 games. And in the schedule that we had and all the travel, to not lose back-to-back -back games is like incredibly um, difficult to do. And I think that just tells you like just the mantra, the toughness, the togetherness. Because if you're, if you're not connected, like that's how, and, and, and from day one, you know, someone said to me today like uh, pregame, how are you going to handle it? And like we've been, have, we've played playoff games all year. Like literally in terms of being like a bubble team. The first time the, the what do you call it, the, the bracketology started or whatever, we were like on the bubble or just outside the bubble. Or, so every game truly matters and you just can't afford slip ups. And so, quite frankly, today didn't, uh, you may, maybe ask the guys, but to me, today didn't feel any different than any other g game all year. Until you come out and see the firework, like I said to one of the refs, like the pomp and circumstance, the spirit and atmosphere, the fireworks doing their deal. We got to get those in Logan. Um, was incredible, and that had a big time feel. And then San Diego State had a great crowd. We had, I mean, every day, you know, our fans got better and better. We had a good crowd against New Mexico, an even better crowd. Uh, day two against Fresno, and obviously tonight, like I was worried it was going to feel a little more like a road game. It, it felt like a home game to me. Uh, our fans were incredible, and you know, from the start of the year, our guys really wanted to bring the Spectrum magic back. No doubt we did that, um, and, and to uh, get to this point is really, a, uh, I mean, it's almost a Cinderella story, and certainly has been beyond a magical ride. Um, for this year, and our journey's not done yet, and that's the whole thing, is we, it, it's, we, we, all, we talk about winning and finding a way to win and how do you need to win, but at the same time, it's a balancing act of it's the process, and you just got to keep getting better every day out, and I can, like, I, don't, I can't, I mean, I bet there hasn't been five, eh, eh, maybe five, I don't know, less than ten for sure, where I just kind of lost it on our team. Not lost it like crazy lost it, but, you know, but it's just very rare. Our leadership is so good, and they know when to pick each other up. And good programs are coached by the coach. Great programs are coached by the players. And, and that's what we have, and that goes into the leadership of our upperclassmen and Sam and Quinn Taylor is like, I've said it many times to our local, but he's our godfather. Like that guy, uh, <laughs> he just, it, or he's like E.F. Hutton, when, when Quinn talks, people listen. And he's just been such a rock, never too high, never too low. He's been an amazing uh, mentor for, for Namish, just to teach him the ins and outs and some tricks of the trade. And he's a veteran of the league, so he knows all the players. And, and Quinn is so smart. Every time we put in a new play, I'm not very bright. I always got to come up with these quirky names or something. I'm like, or I'll say, hey, what do we need to call that? And Quinn, like on, the, on point, will just figure something out with the hand signal and and so he's got that talent for him. But um, so anyway, but to be able to do what we've been able to do has just really been remarkable. It, Coach, obviously, um, in talking about that whole bubble and playoff game, you, you know obviously what, what was written about the league all year in terms of where it was ranked. But do you think today, as we asked Coach Dutcher, the deserving two teams are going? And are you proud of that, that the teams kind of who set themselves apart will now be representing this conference next week? Well, yeah, I mean, Nevada obviously had a, a fantastic season, and, you know, for both of us to be tied, and the way we came down, you know, we lost a tough game at San Diego State, and now to win, today was our 10th win in a row. To be able to do that, we knew we had to make a big-time push, but it's not something we really talked about, but, I mean, the two best teams all year have been Nevada and us, certainly. And so, you always want more, um, you know. Uh, I think I truly believe our league is a league that's on the rise. I, I, I really believe that. And so now you get in the field of 68, and we, you know, we want nothing more than to represent the Mountain West Conference in a first-class fashion the right way, and obviously Utah State that way and the Aggies. So uh, we, you know, we'll be pulling for Nevada like crazy. You know, I would assume they would be pulling for us, and, and uh, hopefully we can, can make some noise. But coming into tonight, we, the tournament, you know, people kept talking about the the NCAA tournament, all we were worried about is this tournament, right? And let's validate, let's leave no doubt. Let's validate what we did in the regular season because it's incredibly difficult. I don't care if you're Mountain West, Big Ten, Summer League to go 15 and three. <laughs> like, that's incredibly difficult to do uh, in conference play. And so to be able to do that and then follow it up playing three games in three days and, you know, you hear teams, oh, that's a good, Utah State's a good matchup for us. And you know what? I think I said this yesterday or the day before. 
But there are, you look at our team sometimes, and maybe in the warm-up line, you look at us like, really, these guys are, you know? But uh, we have so many things that you cannot teach that are difficult to have or find, and that's courage, that's heart, that's passion, and just an eternal pride to represent our program themselves and then their teammates in a first-class fashion. And, and um, to do some of the things that we've done this year truly is remarkable and such a credit to our to our team. Come here, to your left, Coach. Craig, just to follow up on that subject, uh, despite all the favorable projections, <clears throat> your team battled today as if winning depended on the, going to the NCAA. Was that the mindset? Yeah. Like, like Sam said, like our guy said, we were, here to, we were here to win a conference tournament championship. And we weren't, I never heard our guy, I mean, obviously, like people have asked, well, do you think you're in? Do you think you're, and we're not worried about it. Like, that stuff doesn't matter. Like, we can't control any of that stuff. All we can control is the schedules that's in front of us, and let's go play our best. And this is as good of a team. You know, you, you coach for 20, I, mean, I think this is 23 years, so you get a little bit, you know, some years you got to really, you got to really coach effort. And we still coach effort, but, but you go into the games and you're like, gosh, are we going to overlook these guys? Are we going to be ready to play? Are you... And, and then when I'm mind, and then I'm just like, and then I, I think back and I take a step back and I'm like, when haven't we been ready to play? You know, it's been very far and few. Not that our guys are perfect, and sometimes you got to call a timeout and just get them back straight. You know, and sometimes they'll take a few plays off. You know, I think there was a couple instances yesterday. You know, when we're up by 25 and we step we step in the lane on a violation, miss a free throw, box up. Those are concentration plays, but it's been very far and few between. But, you know, it wasn't just lip service for our players. You know, when they say something, they mean it. And so to be able to come here and validate and leave no doubt um, was really what we were looking for. Right here. Coach, congratulations, first of all. Thank you. And hope you'll sleep well tonight. I don't know I'm gonna if, sleep if like you've a been baby. sleeping or not. But <laughs> I wanted to ask you about sharing the net with your family. I mean, some people were like, Coach, you're doing it wrong. You know, they're telling you to cut it down, but you took the time to cut off individual pieces for your kids. Why? And what did that mean to you? Uh, you're trying to get me emotional again? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, we all know, like, uh, I've been so lucky to be married for 23 years, I think. 24. Don't tell my wife. Um, and we have four amazing children. And, you know, we leave South Dakota. And I always said it was going to take a special place to leave there because we loved it there and this is a special place and um you know my oldest son's a senior in high school so you're you're moving your your kids going into their senior year and this is you know a lot of the public they don't think about all this stuff right it's always this and that and the other and and um you know your oldest is a senior and I went to land his name is Landon and he's the he's 18 going on 35 and I mean that like he's gonna be he's so much smarter than his dad um, and a little bit smarter than his mom, but he's just got unbelievable perspective, and he's like, Dad, you've worked so hard for so long, and this is something that, um, if this is something that you really want, like, let's do it. Let's make it happen, and he goes, I'll just pretend like my senior year in high school is a freshman year in college, and I'm like, like, how many 17-year-olds, he's 18 now, he was 17 at the time, how many 17-year-olds think like that, you know, and then you move your, my eighth grader is now a ninth grader, and he was kind of the guy, and this, so now, and he was so tight with his friends, and now you're moving to ninth grader, and so you deal with all that, and then I got another one that's now a seventh grader, and then my daughter just doesn't matter. She's running the show anyway. She's a third grader. So um, they're a huge part of it. Like, when mama's not happy, nobody's happy. And when mama's happy, the kids are happy, and so is, so is their husband. So uh, I just can't, you know, the, the lives of coaches' families, and this isn't a, like, you know, we do really well, and I'm beyond blessed to coach and chase and be passionate and get to make a living doing what I truly love to do. And But there's sacrifice that goes along with that. I miss so much of my kids' stuff, but that's part of the deal. But my, my wife doing this and doing that and nights at home when you're gone recruiting and your team is gone and to be able to celebrate it together as a family. My parents were here, and like I said, with the former players, it's just incredible. So if that little memento 
You know, just cutting that down, that's something that those kids will remember the rest of their life. And I told my, my daughter, because she's still, I taught her, I, was in, I told her I was going to teach her how the NCAA tournament works. She thinks she knows. She's researching it, and now she's got the word bracket in her vocabulary. And she keeps talking about, uh, she went to her first Final Four last year. She's like, Dad, if we win this game, can we make it to the Final Four? Yep, we get a chip in a chair, as we say, right? Like a poker player fitting in Vegas. Um, <laughs> But, uh, and that's what we believe, though. If you have a chip in a chair, you know, the other night against boys, we were down, what, five, I think, with 21 seconds to go. We found a way to get that thing in overtime and win the game, right? And just kept our mojo going. Um, and so, anyway, for our kids to be able to, to have that little piece of memento, um, and they'll keep it in their nightstand or whatever, uh, that'll just always be a memory that we'll have forever. And that's what's so amazing about basketball, not to get on a tyrant here, uh, but or a soapbox, but you know, you look at basketball or football or any, and, and you know, a lot of people say it's just a game. It's so much more than a game. It's something that unites people. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, if you're rich or poor, whatever your ethnicity, whatever your background. It doesn't matter. You all come together, and you're just people. And that's what you know. Sean and I met because of the game of basketball, right? Like. Um, it's just amazing how you meet so many incredible people from all walks of life because of a game. And then you have a platform to use it, you know, however you want to hopefully make a huge difference in the world. We just have a few more minutes, Coach has to catch a plane, I'm told. So let's go right here. Did we play a game a little bit while ago? Or? <laughs> <laughs> Coach, how much, how much more difficult is this journey if Kata doesn't make the decision he makes in August, and, and what has he meant to the team? I love the country of Portugal. <laughs> uh, well, certainly, I mean, Namias is just, I mean, you see his enthusiasm and his spirit. He just has that, you know, he just, oh, and like Sam alluded to, and every guy on the team would say, there's not one guy that doesn't love Nimi. I mean, obviously, he's a game changer on both ends of the floor, you know. Um, I mean, if you look at, we jump on that 13-0 run to start the second half, and what did we do the first two or three possessions? He was getting the ball. Um, when In that first half, even when Quinn got the ball down low early, good things were happening for us. So our guys, we made a concerted effort to get it to him. He made a pretty easy, I say easy, it was still a degree of difficulty. It was tough, the little right shoulder, left hook shot that he's really developed uh, the course of the year. But then the second shot he hit was ridiculous. And he had that look in his eye. And, um, but then at the end of the day, defensively, he's just such a game changer. You forget that he's a freshman. Um, and so, he, but he just has this courage, this charisma, this toughness. And when he gets that look in his eye, look out. Good time for one more question. Coach, you mentioned you've been feeling like you've been playing on the playoff games all season long. Does knowing that you're in the tournament give you a little time to celebrate this win and celebrate some of the accomplishments you've had throughout the season? Uh, up until the selection show tomorrow. So we got about, I don't know, 18 hours, I guess. You know, we'll probably give the guys two, you know, we'll see. We don't know if we'll play Thursday or Friday, but we'll give the guys for sure a day off and probably two days off. And, uh, but then we got to get back at it, you know. Uh, it just never ends, right, between, uh, we have an unbelievable staff up and down our lineup, Eric Peterson, Austin Hansen, and David Raglan, and all of our administrative staff uh, have been absolutely incredible, and when the announcement comes um, tomorrow night, we will immediately find out who our next opponent is, and then we'll see, you know, if we survive in advance, right, we win that game, then our next two opponents, so one assistant will be in charge of the one game, and then and then we'll divvy up the other two, and, and I'll start watching film on those, and we'll get rolling right away because it's a quick turnaround. And that's what's been great, though. These guys will enjoy this for a little bit, but we will be on to the next thing really, really quick. And that's where these guys can really, uh, they're as good as any team that way. I'm not beating their own chest, but enjoy it with their teammates and then move on to the next thing. So um, uh, it's been a great journey. We'll enjoy this for a little bit, and hopefully we can uh, survive in advance and make some noise in March Madness. Thank you, Coach. Good luck next week. Hey, want to thank you guys, all the local media, for covering us all year, all you guys for coming out uh, all year long. You guys have been absolutely incredible. I don't know, John, Har John Hartwell, our AD, for hiring me. Uh, it's been the greatest move um, of all time, and I'll stop right there. Go Aggies. Thank you, guys.